Greetings and welcome my friends to this, the sixth episode in our Buzz Aldrin series. You know, very interesting, you learn lessons as you go on in life. And one of the lessons I have just had to learn was that it is necessary to press the record button before you start making an episode. So, luckily I only went on for about 8 minutes before I realized that, hmm, I don't think I pressed Alt F9 when I started. So, anyway, luckily I realized that pretty soon, so I didn't really do anything yet. I was just about to start our Gemini missions. So, this time it's working, I'm sure of it, so there we go. Let's just get into it. I'm loading the game. Obviously, I didn't save over the old one yet, so thank goodness for that. We get this again. Good, so everything is now back to normal. I was saying in the failed attempt at recording, uh, actually the president has now started to recognize our achievements. And when we finished our joint launch uh, Mercury mission last time, the president didn't say anything when the mission finished, but I guess because now we have reloaded this game here, the president now recognizes us, finally. So he says here, the president is very pleased with your current performance and the fact that you managed to achieve a successful mission in the past season. Keep up the good work. We're getting closer to the moon. So that's always nice to hear and to finally get some recognition for all of our work. Now, the first thing that I think we can do is to just have a look again at what we have going on. We finished Project Mercury and we didn't do the uncrewed suborbital flight test, but it's not worth doing that now. We'll only get 100 prestige for it. It's definitely not worth it. Uh, we just skipped ahead to the orbital test that time. So let's close Project Mercury and bid it adieu. It has been a very successful project for us so much that we got some presidential recognition and we finally gave the Soviets uh, a good contest in terms of a manned space uh, mission. So let's start with Project Gemini. The choice of course we have here is whether we want to go straight into the uncrewed orbital flight test again like we did with uh, Mercury or if we want to take a more cautious approach and start with the suborbital flight test. In the failed recording that I just did I went straight into the uncrewed suborbital flight test uh, and that's when I realized that uh, nothing was happening, I wasn't recording anything. So let's do it differently this time. I don't know the outcome of that mission. I didn't finish it. I just uh, exited the game right then. So I'm going to start the uncrewed orbital flight test. Let's, let's do that. Let's see how that works out. We're going to use the Titan II booster now for the first time, which is a great thing because this is an unmanned mission and it allows us then to really test these components for the first time. And uh, that it just will put us at ease when we finally put people into the spacecraft. Now, if we just look back at mission control, uh, actually I still have to commit to that mission. I didn't do that now. Uh, orbital flight test, schedule and assemble. And there we go. So, one of the things that... Uh, we were working towards was getting a second flight director and here you can now see we actually need two unlike with the Mercury missions so I expected this and we have been training Jim Power but he's obviously still in training so he's not available right now and we thus have uh, a slightly lower than ideal skill here 56 percent but this is an unmanned test so I'm comfortable with that we also have the three uh, trajectory specialists here and Guido unfortunately has a 57% which is not ideal. Uh, and then we will need another person who is good with mission operations and we only trained one, Paul Ennis. So that might be a weakness for us going forward that we will have to address. But we'll get to that. So now we've properly scheduled the mission and we can see we have one mission controller who is not assigned and it's Nakita and she is only coming into play when we do 
manned missions so her skill is at 96 percent and that is more than enough for us so we're not going to bother with uh, additional training for her the only other thing that i did uh, now in this previous uh, attempt at recording was to hire two more astronauts and the reason i i decided to do this was just in case something happens you've seen now how long it takes to properly train up the astronauts and if something may it not happen but if something does go wrong then we can certainly uh, benefit from having other people on our team because it takes so long to train them and i think if i'm not mistaken i hired wayne holmes here and who was the other person scott Sintron, i think those two yes so we'll just rehire them and i also increased the pay as normal and that's it that's all i did so now we're back to where i left off in my attempt so let's see how this goes uh, we get the overview again these eva suits we've been working on are almost ready the agena target vehicle is i think more or less where we need it so in the next turn we can take the uh, scientists off of this because it's almost at 90 percent the titan 2 is almost uh, i would say at 80 well 85.9 percent so it's good and hopefully if we have a successful mission it will be even better mariner 5 is not ready and apollo is not ready so everything is going according to plan i think so let's do it. It's riskier, but here we go. <coughs> Just going to have some water. Countdown looks good. Okay, first time for the Titan 2. So far, so good. Excellent. Second stage now. Ecom is reporting a potential problem. Yep. So we've got sixty-three thousand dollars. So we're more than uh, uh, well enough off. The only question now is that you see the, the costs here are becoming increasingly exorbitant. To hire three teams now costs $17,000. So I think we may actually, I think we may actually do it. We need this mission to go well. So let's just pay the money and uh, see if we get our investment back. Yes, good. Hopefully this does not happen too often. Okay, the craft is in orbit. Excellent. Preparation. Retrofire. Good. Three more stages. With this one they added recovery so we've got another step after the descent and splashdown so i guess for the recovery of the gemini craft it's a bit more complicated than mercury okay it's it's paid off so i'm happy i paid that money you never know it might just make the difference so I feel now Germany is finally ready for some manned missions and uh, that's going to help us a lot. So the Titan has been upgraded by 5% and the Germany craft by 38 So they're definitely good to go. We can stop researching the Titan as well. Astronauts coming out of rest season, goals achieved, so on and so on. So just normal news. Nothing from the Soviets luckily. So let's just see. I think it's good if we go straight into a man mission. Let's not waste time. We don't face an orbital flight penalty like we did with Mercury. 
the 20% because we've already been in orbit. It's nothing new for us. So let's do that. Let's keep the suborbital flight, uh, manned flight, and just select again the Titan. Okay, we need at least 11 flight controllers, so we're going to have to pull somebody out of training. And it's going to have to be Jim Power. It's still got some improvement. Gemini and orbital flight. So it says here, involves an orbital flight that extends the suborbital flight mission by placing the spacecraft in Earth orbit and performing a maximum of eight revolutions around it. So it's still a very short term mission. Let's see what the computer thinks is a good idea. The problem here, just like I thought, is going to be Alberto Ferro. He's only got 41% mission op skill. And you can see there, at least it's not too serious. Uh, luckily, you get a breakdown of where this person is going to be involved in and to what extent. And you can see this employee is involved in the Earth orbit stage, but only 10%. So hopefully that low skill there is not going to hurt us too much. The others are all in the 80s and 90s and uh, 70s for the flight directors. So that's all right. Now we have to make an important decision here. Who's going to be the pilot and who's going to be the commander? You see, the commander still needs piloting skills, so it doesn't really matter. But the pilot is, I guess, more focused on piloting. So let's have a look at who's our best pilot here. But actually, we should look at sending people who have not had the chance yet. And if I remember correctly, Evan Mann and Linda Purvis are the only people we have not sent up yet. So let's let's do that. Uh, Evan Mann can be our pilot and Linda can be the commander because uh, Evan has a slightly higher piloting skill. So there we go. Hoping for the best here. Let's just check everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing and we have some more people in training so that's fine. Do you want to end? So we just go straight ahead. Gemini is just the normal updates again. Okay, this is it. The next monumental step in our evolution. If this succeeds as far as I know, we'll be the first uh, of the two sides to actually get a two-manned craft up into orbit. Because I don't think the Soviets have launched Voskhod yet. Okay, some problems. Okay, they're at least off the pad. Come on. America is counting on you. All right. Problem during ascent. The minimum here is an 85% chance of success. But you know me. Minimize risks with manned missions. So let's pay... Let's pay $12,000 and get it over 91%. Good. Worthy investment. It might not have made a difference. It depends what the uh, number was that the computer rolled for that. But at least I feel assured that I did all I could. Good, they're in orbit at least. Good relief. Great stuff. Teaching that uh, module. Teaching the other one. Three more stages, including this one. Okay, it's a success. Two more. Come on, Ecom has a problem.
Recovery, maybe, maybe, yes, I think so. Looks like it. Good, we've done it. Amazing stuff. 5,850 prestige points earned. This is a really, really uh, monumental mission for us. And uh, it's certainly the next phase in our uh, manned project. A two-man spacecraft or two-crew spacecraft has been successfully deployed. So let's see if we uh, are the first. What have the Russians done? Okay, now we can see we are certainly ahead of them. They now only do the joint launch and orbital flight, which we have done in the last video. So they're not far behind us. They're r right behind us. But at least we can be a little bit uh, proud of ourselves here. Goals achieved and so on. So the newest flight controllers have been uh, done with their training. Let me just see who they are. It's this one, but who's the other one here? Simon Rupp. I actually want to send him for mission ops training. I think it's going to pay off when uh, we deal with such a low skill, even though that person only had a 10% involvement in the mission. Let's just minimize the risks. Hooper can just go for more trajectory training in case we need it. And the astronauts, okay, the newest ones will be in for a year, so that's fine. I just want to see, is, is uh, Mariner ready yet? No, 78 is not good enough. We can risk it, but I'm afraid if it fails, then we'll have to dedicate another time slot to it. And right now we can't support more than one mission at a time. Certainly not with a manned mission. So let's not do that yet. Let's go straight to another one. I think we might do the spacewalk. I just want to make sure that the suit is ready. 84% on the next turn. It should be okay. Let's do it. Let's be bold and take a risk. It is a risk, but at least it's a calculated risk. Just want to stop working on the Titan. We need to start working on a booster for the Apollo Earth orbit. So, let's just see. A suit is good enough, I think. Your assessment, Doctor? Believe it's safe. Okay. Now let's do it. So every one of our astronauts except the newest two have been in space. So at least they have that experience. I think I want to use Mary Hawkins. So I will put somebody else here. Our best EVA person will have to go and do this just to maximize their chance of success. And that appears to be Dennis Larson. So I'm going to put Joseph Hill as the Capcom person. The others are looking okay. Then, uh, the, who does the EVA? You can see it's the pilot. The commander doesn't have EVA involvement. So I'm going to use Mary for the commander <coughs> role and Dennis Larson, that very famous astronaut of ours, to do the actual spacewalk. Great. Rocket programs, we just need to have a look. What do we have open at the moment? Should just be the Atlas booster and the atlas agena and the titan that's fine we still might make use of the atlas so i don't want to close it now redstone <coughs> so it's everything from here with the atlas centaur i don't think we're going to use it it has a better transplanetary injection capability and of course a translunar one than the agena but we can just as well use the Titan 3C or 3E and get a really good interplanetary uh, capability and skip that one. They will both start at 75%, so it is just as good. So we'll leave the Atlas Centaur. We now need something to send a manned Apollo mission to orbit. So Saturn 1 is not good for that. Basically, really, we have two choices. We, we don't have the ability to open the Saturn V yet, and its reliability would be too low anyway. <clears throat> so let's decide now, the Saturn C3 or the Saturn 1B. 
I think the 1B, it starts at a 58% reliability and it's again the historical progression. I don't think the Saturn C3 ever launched in real life as far as I know, but I might be mistaken. And this is also one that we could of course use to get the Gemini to the moon, so we might have to open it anyway. I don't know. 60 and 60 and 21 and 45. It has a much better capability for low Earth orbit. Let's do the C3. Why not? Then we skip the 1B because this one can carry more. We just have to get the best manned rocket specialists on that. Okay, I need to keep everyone here on the suit. We'll need that now. The tight uh, Agena vehicle, not necessary anymore. Apollo is still necessary. Okay, let's just get working on the brand new Saturn C3B. Not the best. 4% improvement. It's going to take a long time, but at least we're doing something with it. The next thing is maybe we're not going to need the lunar EVA suit until we actually try to land on the moon. So as far as I know, they might need this for exercises in Earth orbit, but they probably use the EVA suit. But that's the Gemini one. I don't know. Let's just start on the lunar expedition module. It doesn't have far to go. Good. Let's end the season. So there's our brand new rocket. It looks very smart. So see, the Saturn C3B is an alternative to the much more expensive Saturn V for launching lunar expeditions. Its first stage features three powerful F1 engines, of course the same as the Saturn V, just three instead of five of them, while its second and third stages are equipped with a groundbreaking J2 engine, which is again the same as the Saturn V. The third stage can be restarted to perform the TLI burn and is equipped with a docking system to be used in a, as a space tug in the Earth Orbit Rendezvous Lunar Gemini program. I've actually used this as well in a previous game. This launcher can also be used to inject nearly any kind of probes to interplanetary trajectories, which is fantastic. So we might not even need the uh, Titan 3C and 3E. Now, this is very important for us. The penalty here on failure is immense, 4,000 prestige. And of course, I don't want to kill anyone. So I'm hoping for the best here. Dennis Larson might be the first person to do a spacewalk if this goes well. Ecom again has a problem. Okay, it's not serious enough. Almost there. Surgeon is reporting some potential problems, but uh, it doesn't look like it's coming up. Good. This is it. Groundbreaking. Okay, first one is done. It's two more, I think. That looks awesome. Experiments. I guess this is where the science comes in as well. Great. EVA is over and it's been a success. Now we just need to get back uh, to the ground. A lot of things flashing there during retro fire. Okay, it's not a problem. 
Re-entry, bring our heroes home. One more step. Okay, procedures could be the one to undermine us here. No, great, done it. <sighs> Stressful, you know. Project Gemini Spacewalk, Spacewalk as well. Relative safety of his spacecraft and venture into the vacuum of space. Amazing. 1965 is a very eventful year for us. And Soviets finally launched Voskhod, two crew spacecraft, so we are still a step ahead of them. I'm sure in the next one they'll also do a spacewalk. Astronauts have come out of the rest season. Good news! A significant technical discovery will boost the results of the R&D process by 19% during the next one season. So it's a short term thing but it will help us. That's still a, a significant amount. So what is the next move for us? Let me just look at the Mariner again. 81 we can risk it maybe but then again I want to keep forging ahead with our manned progress we've got a lot of choices with Germany and that shows it's really a versatile craft so the next logical step would be to do a rendezvous it seems that if we do that we're not going to get a penalty though if we, uh, yeah, but that is the next step anyway, so that makes sense because we've done the uh, relatively close um, twin launch vehicle uh, meetup before with uh, Mercury. So I think let's do that. That is the next logical thing. It's going to take all five of our astronauts. I have a reasonable confidence in our team and in our equipment, so it is extremely risky again having so many things happening but our component average reliability is 96.4 percent so that is excellent and we really do need to do this before we try a docking because a docking is going to have a penalty if we don't do a rendezvous first let me just see what is the uh, what do they want exactly for this germany uh, uncrewed Man in orbit, all of these things. Rendezvous. Near zero relative velocity and to close within 10 meters. So we must be within 10 meters. Practically, we must be able to dock. But obviously, we're, we're not equipped for that. So, who is going to be Capcom this time? Uh, where is Capcom? Here, Joseph Hill. That's fine. You see also the FAO has gone up to 51%, so from having these experiences, uh, Alberto is getting some improvement. So, two choices here. Let's put Stephen Lewis in command of that one, and Linda Purvis in command of that one. And then we just assign the rest. Uh, it's actually interesting if you go back to the original Race into Space game. There you actually had to see whether the uh, crew members would get along with one another. And if they didn't, they would tend to resign very quickly from the space program. Luckily, we don't have to deal with that here. Okay, that's it. History is being made here. Hopefully not bad history. Okay, finally we see our lem here. Okay, 26 steps. We've never done a mission this complex before. So, everyone, do your duty. Same procedure as the joint launch before. We just launched the one and then one orbit later, 90 minutes later, we launched the other one. But they just have to get much closer. 
And that wasn't possible with Mercury because it didn't have maneuvering thrusters to the extent that Gemini does. I, it did, uh, Mercury did have some, obviously, so it could turn around, but it couldn't move, it couldn't translate in space. Okay, some potential here. Come on, you can do it. Excellent. So, number one is in orbit. Our first brave team. Second one. Orbit insertion, very important. It obviously wants an orbit that closely matches the first one. Okay, it's, it's there. Now the critical part, the new thing that we're doing, which is of course meeting up. Guido is giving a bit of a problem. Done, okay. At least they've met up now. They just need to close the distance. That's great stuff. Amazing technical feat. Ah, okay, so that is done. Now just come home. Not a very long duration, but just very complex. really taxing to our mission controllers because they have to keep track of two vehicles at the same time come on don't fail just have to recover the first spacecraft Okay, the second one, oh dear. Okay, we've got $43,000, so 88% uh, default chance of success. Let's let's just get it to, to 93. I'm paying $24,000. It's a huge amount of money, but we cannot take a chance here. 93 times out of 100, this should work. Good. You never want to be in that 7 times out of 100, but... Uh, it can happen. One more step. Surgeon reports potential problems. Come on, don't be the one to ruin it. Yes, done it. Great stuff again. 6,050. We are just killing that prestige target. But it's not wasted because it will help us towards the next target. Project Gemini, it's all done. Let's just have a look at our people, getting some upgrades, the astronauts and so on. And what have you been doing? See, what did I tell you? I know my stuff. Voskhod spacewalk done. So, the Russians are definitely trying to keep up with us. And they are pretty much succeeding with that. Everything else is just the normal news. Nothing new. So. What now? Let me just see the astronauts. Where are the new guys? Well, who are you? Scott Sinton, advanced training. 
So let's just put this person into a continuous training program like we did with the others. It will take a long time, but it is inevitable. We must do it. Wayne Holmes was the other one. That's it. Okay. At least they're on their way. Just want to have a look here again. He is the one that we're training. Okay, he's still busy for another season. To be our other mission ops specialist. I think we might try Mariner now. It's 1966. It's pretty much on track. I think so. Let's... No, wrong one. So there's only one configuration. And that's just the flyby. Which is one season in duration. Three months. Go for it. Only four people involved. And let me just see. The thing is we don't really have people free to work on other kinds of things. We're really just focusing on the manned component of this whole program. So let me hire some more people. We can just take two more in the uh, set center. And I don't think we should upgrade it now. We can actually. There's nothing prohibiting it. So let's rather be bold and do it but we can start by hiring Paul Weller here he's got a very great skill in most things and Vladimir Dmitrievich I don't know if I said that correct but he must be a defector from the Soviet Union so let's use his skills Good, so let's do some upgrades. That and the vehicle assembly building. I don't think we need to upgrade the headquarters. Uh, we can do how many... Is there any way to tell how many we can do simultaneously now? Maybe if I say upgrading. So, this, if we upgrade, we can do up to 10 programs concurrently. I don't know if that will really come into play, but let's do it anyway. We have so much money, we can just as well do everything. We can't ever upgrade the public affairs office or the museum, so we don't need to worry about that. So we end, uh, well, we start off 1966 with another major upgrade at the Space uh, Center here, which is uh, very fascinating. Uh, it means that we're moving to our next era, really. And let me just have a look. Is there anything more? No, there's nothing more I can do. Okay, first time we go out of the Earth-Moon system. Let's see what we can learn. Ninety percent chance of success. I'm not going to spend money on this. Good. Separating those engines, the fairings, the second stage, the Agena. Okay, transplanetary injection is a success, so at least it's on its way now. The transit and so on, it still has to make it through. Venus, Earth's first ambassador to another planet, even though it doesn't stay. Great, we've done it. You see, that's again the thing. We have a more balanced approach than the Russians. They so far have not done anything outside of the Earth-Moon system. And again, it's just for the scientific value for all mankind. So we've got a probe in the vicinity of Venus, deep space probe, Mariner 5, and we actually now... Yeah, there's another error here. Uh, we now understand a bit about the structure of Venus, but this picture here is level 2 but it's only level 1 so that's another thing that can be fixed 
astronauts from their rest season, so that big team that we had in, in orbit last time. Just the normal news, I think, yep. Okay, lots of building happening. Very, very inconvenient for everyone, I'm sure, because the buildings are being renovated and expanded, so they have to probably go and work in some of these other buildings for the, for the time being. But really, it's for everyone's benefit. So, who can we set into motion here? Paul Hooper, let's send him, James Hooper, let's send him back for more. And then Simon Rupp for better mission ops skill. That will be good for uh, later and for Germany. Can close Mariner 5. We're going to have some people available. So now we can start maybe thinking about new projects, but really I just want to see if anyone is better on human rated rockets. Probably going to end up with the same people. Okay, at least it gives gives us a bit of a boost. So with that, Saturn three, we can still not send anything to Venus. Other than that, that's unfortunate. That means we will need the Titan three C or E. So let's start working on that. Again, we now have the two choices here. I think let's skip the 3C and go straight to the 3E. The 3C uh, transplanetary uh, payload capacity is 600 kilos, but for the uh, 3E it's 3,400. So it's much more uh, versatile and, and flexible. So I think in the long run it will be more profitable for us to use it. It starts with 75% reliability, so we can have good faith in it. <coughs> Next step, I think, is going back to Germany. I love seeing all these green tick marks here. It means we're doing the right thing. Docking. Let's do docking. Okay, just go back. So the first component is to put the Agena target vehicle in orbit and then the manned component. So we'll use the Atlas booster. That would be the logical choice and the Titan, of course, for the Gemini. So let's do it. Oh, we need 13 flight controllers available, which means we will have to take the others out of their training, which is fine. It's not really a problem for us. Just see who is in their training. So remove him. And so obviously they don't benefit from it, but zero percent that's fine that's why we have 13 i'm glad i hired those others let's just see how good they are so mary hawkins is again in the capcom role pretty decent it looks like yeah everyone is is really good at what they do except uh, simon rupp but he at least because we trained him his skill is coming to to bear in that role now so i i think we really have an excellent team commander let me just see who has okay the docking i guess is the piloting skill so let's just pick somebody evan man and lawrence hunt i think that's good our money has fallen now let's just have a look our this has our actual bank balance here so you can see it's dropped significantly given our expensive manned missions and also those payments that we had to pay in the emergency uh, situations but let's just have a look again our prestige target is 26,000 we have exceeded it almost by double nothing to worry about at all okay so our newest one is the Titan 3E, medium to heavy launch vehicle derived from the Titan 3C, which we've skipped now. The major difference being the substitution of the Titan 3C's third trans stage with the highly efficient Centaur Space Tug. It is capable of boosting 15 tons payloads into Earth orbit or more than 3 tons to another planet, example Mars. The redesign from the Titan 3C makes this booster highly reliable, but it comes at a price. Like all things in life, but we are willing to pay for quality. Let's do it. 
Okay, first we have to put the Agena target vehicle into orbit. I remember how this used to be frustrating in the old race into space because your docking skill would only start at 40% and you can't improve it except by succeeding with your docking. So luckily here that's not the case. Okay, it's safe in orbit. Also interesting, the race into space, the one guy would do the counting and he would say 5, 4, 3, 3, 2, 1. He would actually say 3 twice. Okay, problem. 91% chance of success, but we must minimize risks with demand components. I don't think paying more than 10,000 will really be in our interest unless they die, of course. Heaven forbid that, but let's take the chance. 93% is still excellent. And it fails. Of course it fails. Of course it's going to do exactly what I say you must not do. And we're definitely going to lose people here. <sighs> now I wonder if I had paid the full amount whether we would have saved them. A sudden failure in the launcher's guidance system causes the rocket to tumble and explode on in the pad right after launch. The crew is unable to move away to a safe place and perishes. Of course they do. You never get a chance where they actually escape safely uh, from, a, from a launch, even though they should be able to. <sighs> well. <clears throat> hmm. downgrade for the components but they are still good enough I think yeah so well bitter bitterness is part of the experience Evan Mann and Lawrence Hunt perished oh well the Russians have not wasted time they've gone straight to duration level 3 you know that's the really frustrating thing there we uh, that also shows you you really can't prevent disasters you can do everything in your power we had such a good chance 93 chances out of 100 and we still failed hopefully that is the only time we experience that but uh, anyway luckily here yeah, the uh, this is interesting though that the uh, there's increased public interest in our space program, which has given us a boost of two and a half thousand prestige points. And I guess that comes with the disaster that we just had. But this seems to be uh, good publicity. Still working on the vehicle assembly building. If we go now to the museum, flight crews, and at the top, I think we say details. And there we can now see everybody that we've ever had. Was this just the ones? Oh yeah, down here, fallen flight crews. There we go. So there's Evan Mann and Lawrence Hunt. Forty and thirty-nine. So the new guys will have to really pick up the pace with their training because they have to stand in now for the for the fallen crews. What are we going to work on now? We can't let that failure set us back because if it does, it's for nothing. They perish for nothing. So let's put them, these uh, new researchers, on the uh, limb because I think they've got decent skill with that. And that will help to get it ready. So what the choice is now, what do we do? You know what I'm tempted to do? I'm tempted to do it again. Our chance of success is so high that technically we should succeed. I mean, if it's a 93, it should probably now be a 92% chance of success. 
come on, you can't have two 92 or 93s in a row and fail, even though you can, but let's hope not. We have to, we have to get back onto that and in honor of our fallen flight crews. Mary, we need your skill. Joseph Hill, you can be the Capcom commander is Mary Hawkins and Dennis Larson. We call our legends back from back to the fore so they can take up this burden now. Luckily the penalties were not too severe so we can just continue again. The Agena from the previous missions should still be in orbit, but then again it has been a, a three-month period, so we better launch this new one. No, you're not going to fail again. I'm very sorry, but I cannot allow it. The choice now is to pay money, but then if we have the man component and they need money, then I will not have enough. So I will say no. 84%, you better do it. You, I can't believe it. Wonderful. Spacecraft separation fails. The crew activates the abort procedure and the capsule separates. Although both astronauts are recovered unarmed, obviously they didn't even go into the space. This was just the Agena launch. Anyway, whatever. This is where things get very interesting. Soviets have done another Orbital 3, but maybe this is with a new craft. I don't know. Anyway, at least we did not lose anyone again. 1966 is our bad year. Anus horribilis. Let's look again at our statistics. The target vehicle is still at 89%. I'm going to do it again. Yes, I'm doing the crazy thing. We have to get this done. That is the next step. We have to do docking. There's no plan B. Unless we do a direct ascent with Germany, but I'm not going to do that just because we had a little bump in the road and two casualties. <sighs> okay, Stephen Lewis and Linda Purvis. The burden falls on you. Last turn of this video. Let's hope we can redeem ourselves. Seriously, come on. The whole nation holds its breath. Come on, it's nothing new. We've done the Agena. We've done the Atlas. But you know that space travel is a dangerous business, as we saw with the SpaceX explosion recently. There's always a risk. Damn, I should have paid that money originally. I should have paid the full amount. Maybe it wouldn't have made a difference. They should show you the numbers so you know how big a difference you had and whether it would have made a difference if I paid more. That's the thing, it's too secretive here. They must show you. With the original Racing to Space you could see what the, the score was, a 90 or whatever. Okay, come on, at least they're off the pad this time and it doesn't seem like there's a problem. So I'm not going to make demands, I'll just speak nicely and say, please succeed, please, please. Okay, they're in orbit. 
Now, meet up with the Agena, please. Okay, the head is. Lots of things flashing. Okay, docking. Looks good. Here we go. And what then? Procedures. Okay, one more, one more, one more. No, 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 no. Capcom, smile and be happy. I don't want bad news. Good. We did not make up the prestige loss, that was about 8,000 if you take both missions together, but we pretty much came back. Gemini uh, ATV, or uh, Gina target vehicle, docking in space, we've done it. Okay, and that's the end, I just want to see what the news is. Soviets have done Orbit 4 now, but that means they haven't been doing any of the docking steps. So we'll catch up with this part now. See, okay, the rest is just good news and we have our new budget. And we have, of course, still met it. We have much more than the 26000 required. So we have now $43,000 per turn. And the maximum prestige target for the next four years is 52000 which we almost have. So in terms of that, we have nothing to worry and sweat about. So... Uh, there we go, and all of the construction is now finished. We've reached, I think, the pinnacle of the space center here. We can't do anything more. So, that's it. Now we set up for the future. It's just now really regrettable that we had to lose two of our people, but we redeemed ourselves because we have been determined. And I, as the administrator, have been determined because we must succeed. The Russians don't stop. And this is for all of humanity. So, anyway... I hope you'll join me in the next video and that uh, you are following this along and uh, also hoping for the best here. And until then, may fortune favor you. Keep well.